Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance. I just got this new 10 inch table saw from Evolution Tools in the mail. It's the Rage 5S 10 inch multi-material table saw. Uh, they did send me this, so I did not buy this. So I'm gonna market paid promotion. And this isn't going to be a review video or me going over features or things like that. I will have a video for that. I'll put the link in the description along with a link with the discount code if for some reason you decide to purchase this uh, from their website. Uh, but I'm going to make this a how-to video because as I read through the reviews trying to decide if this was the tool that I wanted them to send me, I did notice that several people, even though it's a really highly rated uh, table saw, several people mentioned the instructions weren't all that great to put it together. Now, I haven't even opened the box. I haven't read the instructions. I don't know what's going to go on as I get into it, but I decided while I'm putting it together, I might as well try to film it try to do a step-by-step -step process. So maybe if you're, you've bought this and you're having a problem with it, maybe I can help you out with that. That's the idea behind this video, but let's go ahead and get into this. So step one's gonna obviously be, we're gonna open up this box, get inside of it, get all the parts laid out, get the uh, instruction manual out to have a look at it, and then get this thing put together. So step one says to align the table extension, which is this here, with your the end of the rear slide, which is here. So we want to push that, get this to the edge of that rear slide. And then we also want to lift up on it and get this level right here pretty flush. It doesn't necessarily say that, but that's something you'd want to do. And then there's four screws under here. There's two in the back and two in the front that you tighten with the provided Allen wrench that they give you. I believe it's a five millimeter. So I'm going to get these front two tightened up first, or back two. Then once you get those two tightened in the back, you want to move up to the front. You want to line up your uh, measurement gauge on zero. So we want to go to zero here. And then we've got two screws up here in the front that we also want to do the same thing. We want to flush it out with our table. And we also want to tighten up those two screws while it's on zero. And then that way, as we move this extension over, our numbers will shift with that as well. I'm gonna get it where I want it, hand tighten it, make sure I'm still on zero, and I am. And now I'm just gonna tighten these up. And I'm just gonna snug everything for now. And then once I get to the next few steps, if I see that this won't matter anymore, that it's movable, I will really get in here and tighten them down quite a bit. But this here is also how you would probably adjust your measurement gauge if it's off later. Uh, you could get in here and adjust it by loosening these two, these two screws up here, two bolts, and then making that adjustment. So that's step one. Step two, it says to invert the table saw. So basically put it on its face, but it says to put it on a clean surface and all those things. I'm gonna go over there and get the box, cut the bottom out of it, and I'm gonna place this on that, and then we'll get into step two. It says select the two components labeled number one. And if you look into your uh, manual and you go back to the page where it shows you the diagrams of all those, that's these two members that look like this here. Basically look like a, a handrail of sorts. Again, this is all going to be part of your stand, and for the most part, that's what we're going to be putting together. Then it says to attach those components using B and I, which are the M6 bolts and the large washers. 
Uh, and again, none of these things are labeled. I can understand now why people are having problems with it. I've got my little thing here that says this is a six, and then the, this is the only washers that basically will fit on those. So I'm assuming that that has to be the right washers. And now we're going to attach these to the saw. Based on the picture, you're going to set this component on top of the holes here on your table saw. And it looks based on the picture that you're supposed to set it back in the second hole in and leave the outside ones exposed. Putting the bolt through the, through the table saw, up through there, and then placing a nut on top of that. It's a lock nut. Second, you'll stick the other bolt through here. Should line up. Then we're going to tighten these down. These bolts take a 5 millimeter Allen key, which they do not provide you with, and then also a 10 millimeter socket or an adjustable wrench or whatever, however you want to go about doing it. I've got a ratcheting wrench here. We're just going to tighten this down. Once we have that secure, do the same thing on the other side. Why I've got this upside down and these four bolts are easier to see and I know I've got them in the right place, I'm gonna go ahead and snug these up even more. That's not in the directions, but I didn't snug them up all the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that now since I can see them easier. And you could do some of this with power tools. I'm just trying to install this using the tool that they provided, but they does require you to have some tools that is not provided as well. But I'm trying to use the tools that I think most people would for sure have uh, that way you don't see me using something specific that you might not have. So so that's got these attached. The last part of step two, it says to take the end caps labeled O and N and push them into the end components. So again, go back to the diagram picture. We'll open up this bag here. We're going to dump these out as well. And because none of these things are labeled, so you got to kind of go back and reference the pictures. O are these type with the dome on them. And then N are the flat ones without the dome. You've got several N's, you only got two O's. So it looks like the O's, the parts with the dome, go into these parts of the handle here. So we're just gonna try to hold that in place. Give it a little tap. Get that put in. And then the two ends, the ones with the flat side, go on this side over here. They do have slots in them that I assume you want to kind of line up with these holes here in case they need to be used later. And again, I'm building this as I go. I didn't look at these instructions at all. I'm kind of going from the aspect of you just bought this, you're getting out of the box. I might fumble through some things. We'll figure it out together as we go. Step three says to grab component two and three. And if you go back to your diagram, this small bar is component two. This with this extra spring thing here, that's component three. So these are the two we're looking for. And it says to attach them with components C and M, which is the M5. Again, they're not labeled. If you don't have one of these, you might want to get one of those, but this is definitely the M5 along with the nuts that go along with those. So now let's get these put on. So based on the picture, the little bar goes in between this lever and then you're going to put it through this hole right here. So we're gonna put that screw through, slide that down inside that hole, and then the other screw through this hole and then we're going to tighten those up using the M5 nuts. And again, these are Phillips screws. To tighten these, you use a Phillips screwdriver and then an eight millimeter for to hold back on that nut. And 
Then it says to attach components three and four. Well, three was this one with the lever that we already have been working on. Number four is the longer of the U's that you can see there. It says to attach those components using A, J, and K. A are the bigger M8 bolts. J are the plastic spacers. And then K, it says, are the M8 nuts. So it's going to be the nuts that actually fit those bolts. So they have at least separated <clears throat> the nuts and bolts and all those things to where they're different uh, from one another. They're a little easier to find, but it would have been nice if they put them in a package that said M8, M, you know, or even the letters A, J, and K, so you didn't have to sit here and go back and forth. So these are going to go on like this. Uh, you would first think that maybe this is supposed to go into one of these holes, but that's actually going to be your stop for this latch. So as long as that latch is on there, you slide it on like this. Now we're going to take this bolt from the outside, put it in. We're going to have our spacer. It's going to go in between the two. And this is going to be hard to do with one person and one hand. And then we're going to slide that through that hole. Get that lined up if we can. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there and get this second side started as well with the spacer. So we've got bolt. Spacer. Get that set into there. So once you get both the bolts in, you should be able to press that down and feel that latch. So if you don't have that, you probably don't have it in the right spot. And then we're going to go ahead and put on these lock washer or yeah, lock nuts. And those are A 13 millimeter and you probably don't want those extremely tight because that is going to be your pivot points uh, so again you want this to be able to move and now that locks back into place then it says to take two of these caps labeled in again that's the flat one which is all we have left put them into component three and based upon the picture it's talking about right here and again you have slots on these that line up with the bolts so if you put that in there give it a little tap Go ahead and do the other side as well. Now we're going to attach this component to the machine and it says to make sure that this latch here is turned towards your bevel adjustment and all those things. So that means it's going to go onto the machine in this direction right here. And based on the picture, it's gonna go in this orientation. So your U is going to be on the bottom. This number three component with the latch spring will be on the top like this right here. So this is the way in which it's showing that it will go on here. You're going to attach those with A, J, and K, which is the same spacer, bolt, and washer that we used earlier. So it's the big washer, the big M8, the spacers, and then the lock nuts as well. So we're gonna attach those now. So again, we're sliding the bolt through the square on the piece that's already mounted to the table saw. We're gonna slide that spacer over the bolt Pull it back to where I can get this in there. Slide the bolt through this stand rail. Slide the bolt through the stand rail until you get it through. And then you can get that lock nut attached to that. And again, this is another one that you just want to snug down because you've got movement here. You don't want to make it tight. Now it says to find components labeled five and six, which are the two parts of the stand that are left, the two tubular parts. Five is this smaller of the U-shapes, and then six is your longest parts of your legs with your feet on there for adjustment. Uh, so those are the two parts that you're now looking for. So you're gonna take components five and six, you're gonna put them together like so. And 
And again, this is probably something that's gonna be a little harder to do by yourself just because it's spread out. It's a tight fit. You may want to put it on a surface like this. And give it a few taps with a rubber hammer, rubber mallet if you've got one. Then it says to attach them using components M and D. M is an M5 nut and D is an M5 40 millimeter. So again, you had two different M5 sizes. Some were longer, some were shorter. So these are gonna be the shorter of the two. So then you're gonna take those two bolts slide them through these holes you get a total of four of these two on each side along with that lock nut we're just going to get that started and again this is going to be that phillips screwdriver and then your eight millimeter socket ratchet or whatever it is that you're using Repeat the same thing on the other side. Got both bolts through. Get the lock nut started. Tighten those up. Eight is to attach the wheels to the saw and it says you're gonna use components number three, which they are all in their own separate bag. So it's this bag with these bolts, washers and nuts as well. So we're gonna get those out. They at least were separate. Again, I don't know why they didn't do this with all of them and label it. It would have made it much easier. But it says do not over tighten the wheels is also. So this is the same thing as everything else. If it's supposed to move, you don't wanna tighten it like crazy, but these are going to get attached right here you're going to take the bolt on the inside, run that through the hole. That's a fairly tight fit. You may need to tap on that a little bit. Next, you're going to put the bigger washer on that will fit over this shoulder here. Then you're going to place the wheel on like so. Then the smaller washer that will fit over the threads as far as the hole. And then your nut. Which is also a 13 millimeter. That's going to be hard to get in there with a ratchet wrench. So I did go get a socket. And we will just basically get that tightened on there. That's probably a little too tight. Back it off. You want it to be able to move freely, but you don't want it to have a lot of wiggle like this as well. So we're gonna leave it like that for now. Now we'll go over to the other side and do the other wheel. Small washer, then the lock nut. As you put this component on, you want to make sure that this is pointed towards the table saw itself because that's the way that it's going to stand up as you have it in that position. And again, you're going to put bolt, spacer, and then lock nut. Get that through there. Get one started. And then same thing on the other side. Then if you move this out of the way, you can gain easier access uh, to get to those with your 13 millimeter. And again, we're not going to tighten these down 100% because it's made to move. You basically just want to snug up until your shoulder is completely inside from your bolt because it's a carriage bolt. The final step of the stand, other than the wheels, these are actually number 12, but I skipped this step. I didn't see it at the end of number 11, and you actually have to raise this piece and this piece 
until these two holes right here line up. And then you're going to use the same thing, your A and your big spacer, and then your lock nut on both of those areas as well. So you're gonna lift this up like so, get your bolt started, put your spacer on, lift this one up until you get those holes lined up. Get that slid through. Now we've got that in place. And you can kind of see what this does is this is going to be your standing position uh, once you set up your table stall and then your wheels and your stand legs here, you can adjust those to where you're level. So we've got this side on. Now we're gonna go over to the other side, do the same thing. That was probably the hardest part of the entire stand, getting that spacer in there. That's a tight spot. And again, these are gonna be the 13 millimeter. And we're only going to snug these up. So that's all of the stand. Now we'll get into Flipping it over, looking at those table saw parts, seeing what we need to do to fix those. So let me get this flipped over, and then we'll look at those. Next, it says something about deploying the legs. We've already done that, obviously. We've got it standing up here. And then it also talks about the riving knife, which is already installed. So I don't have to do anything with that as well. A lot of these as we go down through here are already installed. Uh, but you need to check that with your blade once you install that. Next I'll install the table saw blade. They do give you the wrenches that you need to do so. They're over on the side. I'm not a fan of how this attaches. These go over a bolt with this. I'm sure we'll probably end up losing this at some point in time. Uh, but we'll go ahead and loosen up this nut. We'll get out our provided blade. It looks like the rotation is this way and based upon the arrows in here it looks like it should go in like this now this is a one inch uh, it says use only a fits a one inch blade this side over here fits a 5 8 blade so you got to swap this around whether you're using a 5 8 blade or a one inch blade there doesn't appear to be any kind of a button that you press to hold that blade in place while you tighten it but again they do give you the two wrenches you're going to put this big one over top and that will line up on your nut and then you'll use this other wrench and then we're just going to snug that up i'm going to put these back along with this so i don't lose them Next, to install a blade guard, you'll slide it until this pin here is on your hole on your riving knife. If you want to install this, uh, you'll do that. But before you do that, you want to put your insert back on. Because if not, you won't be able to slide that back over top. I'm going to lock that insert in place. Slide this over. Pull that pin until I get it in there. And then you'll screw this. Again, you don't want it overly tight, but you want it tight enough that this stays on, but you want it to be able to rotate up and down based on whatever material it is, you know, that you're running through your table saw at that time. So now you might want to lower your blade and raise your blade just to make sure uh, that that blade guard is going to raise up and down just like that right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts through the fence and just leave it loose get it started and then you can take your fence here 
slide it on top of that. Now you can adjust that and that gives you that extra rip fence. So for the miter gauge, you've got this hold down clamp that goes in there along with this fence, very much like your rip fence. You've got the two adjustable knobs there. They slide down over top of those slots that allows you to adjust that and get that tight. And again, you can move that to one side or the other if that benefits you in some way. Uh, maybe you need to get farther away from the blade on one side. You could move it to one side. I'm just going to kind of get it in the general area for now. Again, I'm not really a big fan of these plastic nuts at the moment. you got to kind of pull out and also tighten at the same time. And now we can slide this into that miter gauge bar. And that should be our miter gauge. It's weird to see a hold down on a miter clamp like this because if you clamp down a material onto your table saw and you want to push your miter gauge through, how is that going to happen? Well, that's because this section of the table moves. I haven't got into how that happens yet, but maybe we'll see that. You'll at least see it in my review video if we don't see it here. Uh, then you got your duck, dust extraction. Uh, we have our holes here. You know, that's going to go from your machine. Back here in the back, one would slide over top of your actual blade guard. And then this one, you would put onto the T down here, slide that over, and then you'll hook your vacuum up to this point. So that's it, totally installed right there. And last but not least is the push stick. That slides in over here on the side like so. And then that way it's right there ready to access uh, if you were to need it. So yeah, guys, I have it all together. It's working. It's standing up. I think that it's all where it's supposed to be. I do have some parts left over, uh, as you always typically do. I don't know if I missed something somewhere or if they just gave me some extra parts. But I will agree with all the reviews that were out there that mentioned something about it. These instructions are not the best. You know, they're very vague in a way. And then they got pictures, which is nice. But the pictures don't show you out enough to be able to tell like what orientation something's supposed to go. So sometimes you just have to be intuitive about how you think it's supposed to work or you have to reference the picture on the box. Uh, they do do a good job at labeling the parts and also the uh, hardware and all those things inside the manual here with the numbers and letters and all those things like that. It would have been nice to see them put them in packages you know, individually that correspond with those letters so that you know that you're getting the right parts and you've used the right amount of them. But it's together. Uh, I don't know that I helped you out any if you've got this. Hopefully it does. I'm not real sure. Maybe I don't even have good footage yet. I have to go back and check that out. But hopefully this is all going to work out if you bought this saw to help you install it easier. Maybe you get stuck in one part. That's the idea behind it, but it may not. But I'm going to now use it for a week or two, or a few days at least anyway, since I'm just going to kind of go over the features, make sure I know how everything works, what it's capable of, and then I'll probably shoot another video of showing all those things. So I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to go ahead and end this video, but again, I hope this was useful. Let me know in the comments below. You guys stay safe. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you on the next video.